hello guys welcome back to this series in the last video we looked at what programming is what programming languages are and how these programming languages can be classified in today's video i'd like us to continue our journey of learning python now just as we have word documents pdfs spreadsheets and other types of files we can also have a file that will contain the code that we write by code i mean the instructions that we want to give the computer and this file that i'm talking about the one that will contain the code is sometimes referred to as a script file but mostly when we say script file we are basically referring to the matlab file if you don't know what matlab is forget i just said what i said and let's move on now for python we mostly just call the files python files because you know they are python files they contain python code and the file extension that they come with is .py. If you don't know what file extension is, file extension is basically an identifier attached to the file name. It starts from the period and it is usually of few letters. For example, you have Word document and then this Word document would have .docx at the end. If you have text file, it will have .txt at the end. Other types include .pdf, .exe, .zip. I'm sure you've seen these kind of things before. That is the file extension. It gives the characteristics of the file. And for Python, the file extension is .py. Okay, so now we know the kind of files that we refer to as Python files. But how do we actually edit these Python files? Because we have to put the instructions in them. If you're on a Windows computer, you can just think about, okay, maybe I can use Notepad. So you go ahead and, you know, go to your Notepad and you type in something inside the Notepad. Then you go to File, Save As, then you save it. And after saving it, you basically just go to All File Types and then you decide to put the .py over there. So you save it and put the appropriate um, extension over there. Well, this is not bad. Honestly, this is not bad. It's absolutely fine, but you will really suffer. There are software specifically designed for writing codes, and we call these software IDEs and text editors. They are actually two different things. The IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, and they have more features than the text editor. It's like the text editor is um, a simple form of the IDE. In this series, we'll be using a text editor called Atom. So I'm going to get you started and help you download Atom right now. So how do you get Atom installed on your PC? Well, I like downloading from their official website and Atom's official website is atom.io. So all I need you to do is to go ahead and go to the URL atom.io. Now the site should look something like this. If you're on a Mac, it will automatically detect it and show you the version that you need to download. And you can go ahead and read about it, all of that. But to get it on your PC, just click on the download button over here and it will start downloading. After clicking on the download button, wait for the download to finish. I've already got this downloaded, so I'm not going to click it anyway. Now, after downloading it, go ahead and navigate to your downloads folder. You will definitely see the .exe file over there. So in this case, the .exe is also a file extension telling you that it is um, an executable file. So you go ahead and run this .exe file, double click it, and after double clicking it, it basically, it usually takes a few minutes, should I say, to install. So it basically does this thing over here, where it will basically install it on PC. Yeah, I'm waiting for it to finish installing so that I show you what's next. Okay, so after the installation, it will automatically open up for you and you should see an interface like this. We'll work with this in later videos, but for now, this is how simple it is for you to get Atom installed on your PC so that we get ready for this journey that we are about to embark on. Just a quick note, you can actually decide to choose your own preferred editor slash IDE that you want to use. There are other forms apart from the Atom. There is Visual Studio Code from Microsoft usually shortened as VS Code, there is Sublime, there is PyCharm, and there are others. So if you think you can use those ones, feel free to download those ones and just learn how to use those ones. It will not have any effect on what you are going to learn from this series. So if you prefer those, 
um, IDs and code editors, feel free and go and get those ones. For me, I'm going to be using Atom. Okay, so we've got our IDE set up, that is the Atom, but we are not quite ready to start the journey yet. As of now, our computer doesn't really understand Python. If you're on a Windows computer, the computer does not understand Python at all. So we have to, in a way, teach the computer the Python language so that anytime we give it instructions, it will be able to understand us. And to be able to do that, all we need to do is to install the Python interpreter onto our machine. And just as we downloaded the Atom, we are going to go to their official website and download it. The official website of Python is python.org. So python.org, you log on to that website and you just follow the procedure, go to their download tab and click on the latest version over here. Here we have Python 3.10.1. So I'm basically going to click that and the download should start. I've got mine downloaded already, so I'm not going to go through the process of downloading it. Just wait for the download to finish and you should continue from where I'm about to go to. Now, after, you've done, after the download has finished, you should navigate to your download directory again and you should see the executable file for the Python. All you need to do is to double click it and let it run. Now, this is a very crucial point. What I want you to do is to make sure you check this box over here, the box that says add Python 3.10 to path. It's very important because adding it to path allows us to use it in our command prompt, which I'm going to show you in a bit. So don't forget this part. Make sure you check this box that says add Python 3.10 to path and then click on install now. I've already got Python installed, so I'm not going to click on install now. But basically the installation process is easy you don't need to do anything just make sure you check this box over here and click on install now after the installation we want to check if the python is actually installed and it's working and to do that i'm going to go into our command prompt also known as cmd if you're on a mac or a linux search for your terminal and open it i'm on a windows so i'm basically going to go to start and i'm going to search for cmd going to hit the enter key. So CMD will give me the command prompt. That's another name for it. And I'm basically going to hit the enter key and it's going to open the CMD for me. I'm going to make this a little bigger so that you'll be able to see what I'm writing. So inside my command prompt, I want you to type this command, Python dash dash version. Now, because we added Python to path, we are able to use this Python command inside our command prompt. And the whole command, Python dash dash version, basically returns the version of Python that you have installed on your PC. So if I go ahead and hit enter right now, it tells me that the Python version is Python 3.8.11. So that's the Python version that I'm currently using on my PC. If you are on a Mac OS or a Linux, you might need to specify the particular version of Python that you are considering. The thing is that we have Python 2 and we have Python 3. Python 2 is an older version and Python 3 is what most people are using now. But sometimes people still use Python 2 because of their project requirements or depending on what they are using it for at the moment. For us in this series, we are going to be using Python 3. And so if you're on a Mac OS or a Linux, make sure to specify the Python version you are using. So the one you downloaded from the internet, I mean, it is Python 3 point something. So you start by saying Python 3 before the version. The reason why you need to do this when you're on a Mac OS or a Linux is because Mac OS and Linux both come with Python version 2 pre-installed on their PC or yes, it comes with the OS. So in order not to confuse the the system is always best to sp specify the particular version of Python you want to use. If you're on a Windows machine, you don't need to put a three over there. You can basically remove the three and just say Python dash dash version. But if you're on a Mac OS or a Linux, make sure to put the version over there. Okay, so just a quick recap before we wrap up. So just as we have different files that we use for our things, we have 
you know, Word documents, we have PDFs and spreadsheets. We can also have files that we write our codes in. And for Python, we call that file Python files. Basically, that's how we call them. And they have the extension .py. And we need to edit these files and place the code in them. And in order to do that, you can basically use any editor that you can find, anything that you can use to create files, you can use that. Create the file and make sure that you have the appropriate extension of it. But in this series, we are going to be using a software that is specifically designed for writing codes. And the type that we are on, the particular one that we are going to be using is called Atom. So in this series, we went over how to download the Atom from the Atom's official website, which is atom.io. We installed Atom. Then we said that now that we have installed the editor, we still need to help our computer understand the Python language we are going to write. And to do that, we need to basically install the Python interpreter onto our machine. We did that by going to Python's official website, which is python.org. We went there, then you go and download the latest version of Python 3, not Python 2. Python 2 is an older version. We want to use Python 3. Mind you, the language is a bit different. Python 2 is a bit different from Python 3, even though the understanding is the same. So for this series, we are using Python 3. We went over to install the Python 3 and we made sure that we checked the boss that said add python3 to path it is very important because that is what is going to allow us to use it in terminal after doing that we came to our terminal where we checked whether the python is actually installed we did that by checking the version and we used the command python dash dash version I also said that if you're on a Mac or a Linux, you need to specify the particular version of Python that you are using. Either it's Python 2 or Python 3. All right, we are done for this one. If you like this content and you like to support, you can do that by simply leaving a like behind and subscribing to the channel for more. If you want to become my friend, feel free to connect with me on Twitter. The handle is trevenue 44 if you have any problems, questions, or anything relating to what we've achieved in this video, feel free to leave that in the comment section. I'll definitely reply your comments and help you out if you have any problem. If you have problems installing Python or Atom onto your PC, let me know. Reach out to me and I'll definitely help you. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video of this series.